Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. So today's video is one that I have been super excited to put out. I've been filming it over the span of the last 35-ish days, 40 days. Um, so I've been super excited about this. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of quarantine. What is quarantine? How do you quarantine? What happens if you don't quarantine? Etc, etc. And I'm also going to show you guys how I quarantine. Because I may have picked up a new animal for my birthday. It was rehomed to me. It was one I could not say no to, and you guys will understand why when you see her. Um, yeah. But anyway, she had to go into quarantine, so I filmed along the way the whole 30 days, how I did that, what I did, the whole process, and gave you guys updates along the way. So before we get into that and see the new animal, we're going to talk about quarantine. So quarantine is something that's very important when you're bringing in new animals, when you already have animals that are established. So very important for people that have extensive collections of reptiles. So with this new animal, I have 14 reptiles now. So I do not want to take the risk of bringing in a new animal that could potentially affect the 13 other animals that I already have. So quarantine is when you bring in a new animal and you keep it separated from all of your other established animals. You either have them in a separate room, a separate building, whatever it is, you keep them far away from your other animals. So I love this apartment because I actually have kind of like two mudrooms over here. You walk in and there's a mudroom. You walk in, there's another little room. And then you come into this living room. So when I did my apartment tour, I didn't show you guys my mudroom for a couple of reasons. One, it was an atrocious mess where I threw everything that was in my living room, in my bedroom that didn't have a spot, I threw it all in the mudroom so that I could film because I just, I wanted to get that apartment tour out and I just had random things lying around without a place. So it was a mess in there. And two, because I did have my animal in quarantine in there and I didn't want to make any announcements until I put out this video. So I didn't want to ruin that surprise. So. You guys didn't see my mudroom, but when you first walk in, there is a mudroom, there's a whole section, there's a closet, yada, yada, yada. I don't do much in that mudroom. It's kind of just where I put things. So the new animal is quarantined in there. I don't cross contaminate. We'll get into that in a little bit, but she is in the first mudroom when you first walk in off to the side. And then you walk in, there's the other room, and then you walk in and it's the living room. So she is kept nice and far away from all of the other animals. So when you have an animal in quarantine, not only do you want to keep it separated from your other animals, but you want to make sure that you are not cross-contaminating anything, whether it be feeding tongs, food, anything else. You want the animal to have all its own supplies. You want quarantine and supplies. That is only for the quarantine animals. You don't use it for your already established healthy animals. That way, if there is something going on with a new animal, you're not bringing that to your other animals. So the reason you quarantine is so you can monitor the new animal and make sure that it is healthy and that there's nothing wrong with it. This way, when you bring the new animal into the space where your other animals are, you know it's healthy, you know it's not gonna harm your other animals, and everyone's gonna live a nice, happy, healthy life. So there's a couple of things that you want to watch for when you have an animal in quarantine. You want to be looking for signs of respiratory infections or other common illnesses. You want to make sure that overall the animal has normal behaviors. You want to keep an eye out for mites because the last thing you want to do is introduce an animal with mites to the rest of your collection. You want to monitor their fecals, make sure that their poops and urates and whatnot look normal. Um, a fecal exam by a vet is always a good idea. I especially recommend it for wild caught animals. And last but not least, you want to make sure that they are consistently eating. So those are kind of the main things that I look for when I am doing quarantine. You also want to handle your quarantine animals as little as possible. One, because if you're handling them, that's a good way to cross-contaminate with your other animals. 
too because moving homes moving to a new area a new enclosure is already stressful enough for an animal if you add handling on top of that that's just completely unnecessary avoidable stress so when you have an animal in quarantine you should not handle it if you can help it this animal that i have in quarantine i only handled her when i needed to clean her paper towels because i couldn't really do that with her on them so that was the only time i ever handled her So the next question that I'm going to tackle is what happens if you don't quarantine? So if you don't quarantine and you bring in a sick animal, you could potentially be passing that illness along to all your other animals. Then you're facing extreme vet bills and possibly death. I have talked to or heard several people say that they have failed to quarantine a new animal, they brought it in and it wiped out their whole collection. This actually happened to a gentleman that I met when I picked up Kronk. So when I picked up Kronk, my Dumeril's boa, I met the guy that had him in a library parking lot after an expo. We did the exchange. A guy that was leaving the expo saw us, asked if he could come see the snake. When he saw it was a Dumeril's boa, he told us he used to have one. He loved them. He had, I don't even know how many snakes. I think it was in the 40s range. He brought home one new snake that was sick exposed it to the rest of his collection and they were all gone in about 48 hours so could you imagine you have over 40 snakes you bring in a new one and that one's sick all your snakes are dead in 48 hours that's thousands of dollars that he lost right there on top of all of those animals that he loved so you really want to take quarantining seriously, especially when you have multiple animals. So on top of passing on illnesses, if a new animal has mites, you those are very easily transferable to other animals. And mites are a pain in the butt to get rid of. You don't want to have to deal with that. So avoid that at all costs and just quarantine your animals, okay? So going off this a little bit i want to talk about my personal experience so quarantining is something that is kind of new for me i didn't do it for a while i guess i didn't really understand doing it in your personal collection i knew zoos did it i knew aquariums did it i understood the importance of doing it there i guess i just never really thought about the importance of doing it in a home setting and you guys know i started off with arcadius and then I got Phoenix and then it was a while. And then I started, I realized that reptiles were my passion. It was what I wanted to do. I wanted to spend my life taking care of reptiles. And that's when I started to accumulate a little bit more. And so I understood the husbandry aspects. I understood the care, but I was still learning how to be a reptile keeper as a whole. And quarantine was something that I was slowly learning as time went on but it wasn't something that I was doing right off the bat. So I learned the importance of quarantine after Rexpo last November, I think it was. That was when I got Crikey, and when I got Momo, my Peter's Banded Skink, and when I got Yeti, my Toke Gecko. Now many of you know, Momo and Yeti are no longer with me. Momo actually never made it on this channel. Um, he was very sick right off the bat. I did film quite a few videos with him and through that process, so I do plan on eventually making a video about wild caught animals in which I will insert all that footage so you guys will eventually get to meet Momo, RIP Momo, um, but you'll eventually get to meet him and see what we dealt with. Um, but basically I got three animals at that expo and two of them are no longer with us. And those two that are no longer with us were wild caught animals that had some problems. So after that expo was actually the first time I ever quarantined an animal. And that was because I knew that Momo was already sick and already had issues when I got him. Um, so I brought him right to the vet. I got him knowing that I knew that I wanted to be the one to take care of him, which I know was bad. You shouldn't support people selling these wild caught animals. Um, but he just tugged on my heartstrings and it was one of those situations that, you know, I say you shouldn't do it, but it, it happened, it happened. 
So I brought him to the vet and whatnot, um, but I kept him downstairs in our living room in my college apartment where the rest of my animals are upstairs in my bedroom. But because he was already sick, I knew that I wanted to keep him away from my other animals. However, Yeti and Crikey both came up to my bedroom and Yeti at the time seemed totally fine, totally healthy in my mind. I thought I had bought a captive bride toe cake echo. I didn't realize she was wild caught. I should have realized it or I should have asked, but I failed to do so because like I said, I was still learning how to be a reptile keeper in general. The types of things you should ask at expos, the type of things you should look for at expos, the process of quarantine, all of that were things that I was learning along the way. So I'll obviously never make that mistake again. <laughs> but Yeti yeah, ended up having some issues. We aren't totally sure what. Um, I couldn't find a vet that would look at her um, or even just look at pictures because they hadn't actually seen her in person type of thing. Um, and she ended up passing away right after my college graduation when I was considering driving a good four to five hours away just to find her a good vet. Um, but she ended up passing away and um, that was that. But Crikey is the real thing that I want to talk about right now. So Crikey came from a not so great pet store that is known for having sick reptiles and reptiles with mites. I didn't realize this because at expos, they vend animals under different names that aren't their pet store name. They come selling reptile equipment and supplies under their pet store name, but then they sell animals under different names. And that was something I didn't know. So I didn't know that I was buying my jeweled Lacerda from that pet store. I thought I was buying them from a breeder or a good breeder, not a pet store that breeds them. And yeah. So Crikey ended up having mites. Now I didn't realize this until I went to move home. It was the first time I ever handled him. Um, I didn't do a quarantine setup. I put him right in with substrate and all this good stuff. And he was having a blast. He seemed fairly healthy. He pooped regularly. He had a great appetite. So I never questioned it. But when I picked him up for the first time to put him in a container to take him home, I saw two little mites crawling on my hand. That was a terrifying moment for me because I was in the process of packing up all of my animals or packing up half of my animals to move back home. So I panicked, <laughs> needless to say, but I put him in his little enclosure thing. I had my friend help me bring his enclosure downstairs immediately. We dumped everything into the garbage. I hosed down his enclosure. I Don dish soaked his enclosure and I put it in the car to try to take it home. I didn't put anything in it. Where on my other enclosures, I was putting stuff in just to make use of the space in the car because my car isn't that big. His, I just left alone. I didn't want anything to touch the inside of it just in case. Um, but it was stressful because I was moving home. I couldn't really keep him separate and keep his stuff separate that well. Um, but I did put him in a travel container. I used coolers um, because they held the heat very well or whatever it was I needed. Um, so he was put in his own cooler. I had him in a styrofoam cooler that used to be Phoenix's travel can, travel bin. But because of his issues, I put Phoenix in a different bin and put him in that. So he would be on his own. He wouldn't be in any of the other animals. And then when I got home, I threw that cooler away. And the minute I got home, I started um, treating him immediately. He went in a quarantine setup. He got treated for mites. However, I never saw another mite again. So I'm thinking he may have just picked up those two from being near those other animals at that pet shop and that he didn't actually have mites. So thankfully I avoided a catastrophe. It was only ever those two mites that I found and I am super lucky that he didn't have more and that they didn't transfer to my other animals because I have heard from people that that's happened to that it is the worst thing ever to try to get rid of all the mites. And I don't know what I would have done if that had happened to me. So ever since then, I have taken quarantine so seriously. I want to avoid any potential problems and, <clears throat> sorry. And so yeah, so that is why it is so important to quarantine and what can happen if you don't quarantine.
Sorry, I kind of went way off there. So next question we're going to tackle is how long should you quarantine for? So I find the average that most people go for is 30 days. 30 days is pretty good quarantine period. However, there's a lot of people that say 60 days and even some people say 90 days. You know, the longer the better. It's just more time to make sure that your animal is healthy. I personally aim for 30 days. However, if I'm bringing in an animal that I know has some issues or concerns me a little bit with their health, I will keep them in quarantine for longer. So it's very important to remember that the quarantine period is that, that 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, whatever it is, that is how many days they have to be healthy before you bring them out. If you have an animal that comes in with a respiratory infection, you don't get to start counting those 30 days until that infection is cleared. You want a full 30, 60, 90 days, whatever, of being healthy. So if you get to day number 20 and all of a sudden your new animal is showing signs of some sort of issue, you have to fix that issue. Once it's resolved, you have to start over and start from one again. Now, if you bring a new animal into quarantine, when there's already an animal in quarantine, that animal also has to start over. You want all of your quarantine animals to be on the same schedule. You don't want an animal to be on day 15 and then you bring in an animal that has a respiratory infection and then you take that animal that's already there and bring it out into your collection. Next thing you know, your new quarantine animal passed on that respiratory infection to your other quarantine animal, which is now passing it on to your collection. So all quarantine animals need to be on the same schedule. One has an issue, you fix it, they all start over. That is the proper way to do a quarantine. So before we get into showing the footage of how I quarantine, I'm going to tackle the last question, which is how do you quarantine? So we already said that you keep them far away from your other animals, they have their own supplies. Now let's talk about the actual setup. So I personally like to do quarantine setups in plastic tubs. I think they're just super easy to clean and disinfect. However, you know, there's no harm doing it in a tank also, just as long as you can clean it. So for substrates, paper towels are the most commonly used quarantine substrate because they're white. It is very easy to see things on them. It's very easy to look at the fecals. It's very easy to look for mites because they're just white. If you don't want to use paper towel, newspaper is also an option. However, it's a little harder to spot mites on a newspaper because there's so much going on on a newspaper. Now, a quarantine setup is the only time I think is acceptable to supply a minimalistic setup, a bare minimum. So you want your hides, your water dish, a food dish if you need it. Typically, that's it. If you want to use decor, fine, but you want to make sure everything you put in is super easy to clean, super easy to disinfect. When you're feeding, you never want to take food that is uneaten from your quarantine animal and give it to other animals. So if you have, you're offering a cricket to a lizard and the lizard doesn't take it, don't go offer that cricket to another lizard somewhere else in your house because that is cross-contamination. Just like a mouse for a snake. If you try to offer a snake a mouse, it doesn't take it, don't offer that mouse to another snake in your collection that is already healthy and established because you are cross-contaminating and so you want to avoid that at all possible costs. So the last thing I want to say is when you're doing your care routine, always start with your healthy established animals first and save your quarantine animals for last. That way you get all the healthy animals out of the way, you're touching them, you're cleaning them, whatever, you're in their enclosures, and then you move on to your quarantine animals. That way if they have something, you're not messing with them and then going and messing with your healthy animals. You don't want to do that. It's always a good idea too, after messing with your quarantine animals, to change your clothes, thoroughly wash your hands, of course, but changing your clothes and whatnot is, it's not gonna hurt, it's, it's something good. I personally, when I do things with my quarantine animals, I feel like I'm contaminated. Even if they're totally healthy, just the idea that they are quarantined makes me feel like I'm contaminated. So I change, I thoroughly wash down. Sometimes I even feel like I have to shower, even if my animals are totally healthy, which this animal in quarantine is totally healthy. She was healthy from day one. She's still totally healthy. And I'm super excited that she's done with quarantine, but yeah. Okay, so now that we've covered all of that, let's go ahead 
rewind 35 40 days ago to when i got this animal and set up the quarantine enclosure so you can see how i set it up what i did a whole nine yards and yeah so without further ado let's get into that all right so my tripod doesn't bend down enough to film this so i'm just gonna one-handed put together a quarantine tub while recording with the other hand so this is my quarantine area it's technically my mudroom i don't really have anything to put in here i eventually like like a little table or something right here to like put quarantines on so they're not on the ground but i haven't quite found one that i like yet or that fits the space really well so yeah anyway here is the tub for the quarantine i was going to quarantine her or him or whatever he she is in the 40 gallon breeder that i was going to put her in him in you you get what i'm saying that's gonna put it in um when it's done quarantine it's just so big and bulky and annoying and being a rainbow boa they need higher humidity so i just went out and got a tub i already have ventilation holes in it and as you can see i've got velcro here because i will be putting velcro straps on to help hold the lid down so i have two on each side plus the which my columns on the end that already hold the lid on so for the ventilation holes i'm trying something different with this guy i usually do all my holes along the top but i've been seeing more people save for higher humidity put holes along the bottom because heat rises and brings humidity with it and if the holes are along the top you lose out humidity where if you put it on the bottom it holds humidity better and then there's they add a couple on the top for good airflow. So I've got some on the bottom here, and on the two ends I have a couple along the top. So we're gonna give that a try and see what kind of difference that makes from what I'm used to doing in the past. So this tub came right from Walmart. It is a 32 inch by 19 inch by 13 inch. So you can see I've already got paper towel in. Paper towel is the best quarantine substrate because it's very easy to spot mites on, it's very easy to see their feces, it's just very easy to keep track of things on a paper towel because it's white, it's plain, there's no distractions, things don't blend in, so it is the best quarantine substrate. And I've already got the, you can see the thermostat back there, I've already got the heat mat set up on this side, and I've got a digital thermometer hooked up, the digital thermometer and hygrometer hooked up as well to that side. And I do have a temperature gun that I use to check all of the temperatures in my enclosure as well. So just a bunch of ways to make sure that the proper temperatures are going on in this bin. All right, so now we can get into setting it up. So for quarantine setups, you want them to be as basic as possible. Now I'm all about enrichment and creating a natural environment and allowing for natural behaviors. But in quarantine, this is where you're allowed to do the absolute bare minimum because you want it to be super easy to just observe your animal and make sure they're healthy. So what I'm going to do is your two basic hides. So I have a warm hide and I have a cool hide and I have a water dish if I can figure out how to make this all fit. He was bigger than I was expecting, so the hides I had were too little. These might be too big, but let's just see what I can do. Okay, so we're gonna give that a try. If I find these hides are big enough that you might be able to go smaller, I'm gonna try a smaller hide, but I really think my smaller hides are too small, so we're just gonna see how this works. Anyway, cold hide, warm hide, basic water dish. It's just a clear plastic tub, super easy to clean, super easy to see things in. And then if you want to, you can add a little decoration, just something easy to clean, something that's not super porous. So I just have this fake plant that I cleaned and I'm going to stick it right right there. And then I took this idea from Snake Discovery on her YouTube channel when she set up a quarantine bin. And she just put a rock inside. So if they go into shed during their quarantine period, they have something that they can rub on. So I will just stick that rock in there. And there you have it. There is a very basic, easy, simple quarantine setup. You just provide the basics 
of care. So your two hides and a water dish. Those are really the important things with a paper towel substrate and your heat mat hooked up to a thermostat and just keeping track of that. And then just for enrichment purposes to give them a little something, some sort of decor that is super easy to clean that isn't porous so no wood unless it's like totally fake and you can just scrub it but nothing that will absorb anything. So fake plants, fake, I don't know, fake stuff, fake decor. And then something that they can rub on to help shed, like a rock is a really good addition. So there's a quarantine setup. And now we'll go ahead and put the snake inside of it. And I almost forgot because it is a rainbow boa and it needs higher humidity. I am just gonna give it a quick spray down to bump up the humidity. We have a paper towel that absorbs water well, so it'll definitely help. There. Ouch, they did really good knots. Alright, so there he is. Where's your head? There's your head. Alright. Don't think he liked being in the uh, bag for that long. Alright, so this is the snake. The lighting in this area doesn't really do him justice. But if you see him out in good lighting, he is very iridescent. And we're going to go ahead and put him in his new setup. Hmm. Kinda glad I moved those uh, big hides, we'll see. Okay, so it's 7.30 the next morning, I came in this room to turn on the lights, and I had no idea, but this whole time, he was in shed. And remember how I said, if you put that rock in there, it gives them something to rub on? Look where the majority of that shed is, right next to that rock. Also, it looks like he peed. But look at that. One day in, we have a full shed. Off to a great quarantine start. All right, so there's the head. You can see the eye caps all the way down to the tail. Literally, this is the most perfect shed I've ever gotten from a snake. I've had a couple perfect sheds before, but not this perfect. Like they usually end up ripping, or if I try to untangle them, or like un whatever, unwind them or whatever, I end up ripping them. This is the first time I've had a full, complete, unripped, perfect shed. This is so exciting. Okay, so I've had him for a week now. So we're gonna go ahead and do our first feeding with him. So if you do not like to watch snakes eat rodents, or in this case, mice, I suggest you skip to the timestamp right here. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and feed him. Enjoy your mouse. It kind of stinks over here this morning, which tells me there's probably a fresh poop in there. So I'm going to clean out the paper towel, do a quick little handling session, 
and I return, turn him back to his quarantine enclosure. So another reason I do handling sessions during this time is because it allows me to kind of observe the snake at a closer proximity. Um, so I can listen out or look for signs of respiratory infections or other um, physical issues that may be present. So as you can see, he's very well mannered. I haven't seen any mites in the tub, but I did also just give him a quick soak um, just because he was also sitting in his urine. Um, so gave him a quick soak just to clean him off and inspected that for any mites and nothing. So confident in saying that he is mite free. You can see he's absolute sweetheart. All right, so that is it for today. Put this back on, she's looking good. All right, so today is August 27th. It has been exactly 30 days since I picked up the rainbow boa. And in those 30 days, he has been, or she, I believe it's a she, has been very healthy has been consistently eating and pooping and everything looks normal. So uh, since it's been 30 days, we're gonna add some substrate and make it a real enclosure. Now I didn't plan on filming this on exactly 30 days. Um, it just so happened to be that today was the 30 day mark. I honestly thought 30 days was about a week ago. But I guess today is the 30 day mark. So I can't move her in with the rest of the reptiles yet because a couple changes need to be made on the shelving unit before I put her in there. Um, so she is going to stay over here for a little bit longer, which isn't bad, you know, extra quarantine time um, is better than having less quarantine time. So extra quarantine time doesn't hurt. Uh, so we're going to add in some substrate and make it like a real enclosure and see how she does with that. So right now I have a block of Eco Earth um, expanding, if you will. So we're going to take care of that and I'll check back in with you guys in a couple minutes. Right, so here we go. New and improved enclosure. We have some eco earth on the bottom. I didn't realize that I'm actually out of moss. So I'm going to buy more, order more. So she will have a layer of moss. Got warm hide back in, cool hide, fresh water, and plants. This plant was laying down before, but I put it up and I added in this plant. So more greenery. So we'll give that a try now. What do you think? All right, so she wasn't doing much. So I decided instead of hovering over her with a phone and like watching her explore, I would just leave her alone to do her exploring. So that's it for today's update. The 30 day mark is complete. Um, as soon as I get things arranged how I want them with the rest of the reptiles, she'll be able to move in with them on the shelves. So I'm very excited to finally be able to introduce you guys to Calypso, my Colombian rainbow boa. So I don't want to get into it too much because she will have her own introduction video, but yeah, so that whole process was for quarantining Calypso here. So that is Calypso. And yes, I did do an outfit change because I'm about to film her uh, introduction video. So just ignore that. So of course, thank you guys so much for watching as always. If you have any questions about quarantine or any quarantine stories or experiences of your own, please leave a comment, let me know. Um, and yeah, so stick around. If you want to make sure you don't miss Calypso's introduction video or see more of her, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can check that out. And we'll see you next time.